got thanks that I'm giving in advance. Don't gotta wait till I see it in my hands. Don't see it now, but I learned to trust. You could do a lot with a little song. So I'ma let you hold. Everything I got, I'ma let it go. Tell the world, I'ma let them know. You the one like the metal gold. Yeah, that's a winner. I ain't talking summer when I say you need the sun. Brings life in the night of your life. Be the light of your life. Oh, yeah, your life at the Christ song. Oh. Tell me who you know that brings hope to the things that were hopeless. Master to the pieces that's broken. Only want to change your life. Okay, so welcome to the pre show. As you can see, we're doing something a little bit different today. We have a pie cast style we are potting and look who we have the illustrious wow illustrious i'm gonna have to look that one up <laughs> make sure i'm not getting played <laughs> so, nah. what's up miss charlie how are you man i'm doing good i can't even lie it's it's a good day to be sitting here with you i'm glad that we have changed the format a little yeah, bit change the format yeah. um tell us a little bit about yourself Ooh, about myself, uh, I, well, what everybody uh, probably would want to know first, I am Pastor Mike's only son, um, only uh, birth son, should right. I say, right. unless it's somebody else out there that I don't know about, you know, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nah, just kidding, just mm -hmm. kidding, but um, yeah, so one of the three kids, mm -hmm. I guess you'd say, I'm a grown man, though I'm 33. Okay. Uh, I am the head of the media department here mm -hmm. at the church, and I am trying to make it more of a production team okay. than just a uh, media church team. Right. If okay. That makes sense. So yeah. tell us, a, tell us a little bit more about what your vision is for that and like what the importance is of production for getting the uh, word to people. Vision. Um, well, vision, I mean, I kind of said it in that first little uh, spill is mm -hmm. just that I, I want to be bigger than what we technically are right now. Mm -hmm. Um, we got a great team, all my volunteers and my MOLs, man, we love you guys. We are killing it right now and we are growing 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 um but i think to be able to go from an mol or volunteer mm -hmm. to being able to be like a paid staff mm -hmm. and not just in the church but like on a production company right right um having a real job um uh in what you're doing mm -hmm. for fun on a sunday i think you know it, it's 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 beneficial at, at you know, I gotta, gotta be at some point in time, for sure you know? for sure especially if they're trying to learn media mm -hmm. as well because you know you got some people that will join and they you know they they they're into media but really more their heart is to serve right. so they're like man just put me anywhere you know and right. we'll put them in certain places that they end up uh attaching themselves to and then mm -hmm. they you know end up liking it um but then you have those people of course that uh, want to be better in production mm -hmm. or want to be better in filming or taking pictures or anything of that uh, nature, any right. media. And, um, you know, we, we here, we got all the equipment, we got all the knowledge, you That's know, right. so we teaching and, and, and growing together. So I, I think once it, uh, once I have a little bit more, uh, Hmm. How can I say this? Once I have, I guess, more time to really like train mm -hmm. my guys and not just on a Sunday, um, I think we will become my goal, which is being a real production company. That's fire. So for people who so I guess right now, do you think that the media team could use more hands or like more interested volunteers or what do you think uh, for um, people who are like wondering how to get involved? Yeah, I mean, I think we always need people. Mm -hmm. I think um, if to have a backup to a backup to a backup right. is a beautiful thing. I for mean, sure. you know, you should have some time. You should be able to say, I don't want to do this today. For sure. And then we'll have somebody else in place. So right. I think uh, the more the merrier. For sure. Um, I guess 
we can switch gears a little bit. Yeah, because I don't want to just talk about production, <laughs> production. You know, I could do this all day, but yeah, you don't I don't bore yeah. No, it's not boring. I think, um, I don't know about other people, but I came from like a real small church, like mm. 50 people, like old school Baptist church, right? right. <laughs> Where they like, you know, stomping their feet. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. we did worship. So to see a church like this, it was like, crazy wow, to me yeah and yeah. then when i found out that it was volunteers that were like basically the engine to the train mm -hmm. i mean it really mm -hmm. blew my mind it's a real impressive type of vibe and i also yeah. think you know when you look at churches across the board it seems like there's kind of like an evolution going on where it mm -hmm. seems like a lot of these churches are very like focused on maybe it's like discipling people or like reaching out to the mm -hmm. masses since mm -hmm. social media is so big. Right. right what do you right, think right, about right. that in terms of social media and its potential? Uh, I think social media is great. I'm not the best with social media myself. Um, I don't post really ever. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to get better with that. Um, I think it is a good tool for the church though, mm -hmm. because I mean, a lot of people that's on social media will never come inside of the church. You know what True. I mean? So right. to be able to have social media that you could actually reach them because church ain't just about God. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Church has taught me a lot of principles that I use that I don't want to say don't involve God, uh -huh. but they aren't like uh, it. You know, just having faith to, to get a parking spot. I don't got to believe. Right. You know, I don't got to like, oh, come on, God. Come on, God. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't have to do that. It's just like it's something that I know I'll have once I get there. That's fire. So let's talk a little bit more about faith. So I recently started doing SOFBI. Oh, it's not SOFBI. It's FCCBI, which is. Mm -hmm. Faith City Central Christian Institute. Mm -hmm. So I did not have being a minister on my bingo card, mm -hmm. but um, Holy Spirit spoke to me about joining it. And the first thing we learned about is faith. And they say faith is acting on what you believe. Yeah. I guess talk a little about talk a little bit about how you exercise your faith mm -hmm. and like maybe even what it's been like on a personal level, like with Dr. Mike as your dad and Dr. Dee Dee as your mom and right, just right, coming right. from such a lineage, what has that felt like for right. you? Um, I think learning learning faith for me, um, first of all, I am a visual learner. Mm. I am not someone that you can sit up in front of and just talk to all day mm -hmm. and then I got everything that you were talking about. Like, But if you showed me like how you were doing it and right. you were very descriptive and you kind of like almost like showed me pictures mm -hmm. of what you're talking about and then it's, it's, it's a cakewalk. You right. know what I mean? Right. So I've been able to see things mm -hmm. uh, come to pass, um, you know, that Pastor Mike would be talking about. Right. Um, even when it came down to the 40 acres and mm -hmm. uh, getting a horse and all this type right, of stuff. Right. He didn't keep that horse, <laughs> but, you know, he found out about all that maintenance. <laughs> that, <laughs> That's that right. Horses come with a lot of maintenance. Ain't like a dog, bro. It's not like a dog. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, you know, all that stuff. Just seeing that play out and then even to the point um, where uh, Pastor Mike was sick. Mm -hmm. Apostle Mike was sick. He was down. And um, Dr. Didi had to really like use yeah. her faith to where I didn't use any faith in that situation. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I was still like, faith was faith. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But I knew what faith was, but was I really using it and acting it. on it, exercising mm -hmm. it? No. Um, right. I didn't really know the power of it until then. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then shortly after, mm -hmm. I needed that same kind of faith Dr. Didi had in my own situation oh, wow. uh, with my child uh, because he was... Uh, He's premature. It had a bunch of little issues. Mm -hmm. It had all these different stuff going on with his heart. So he had to get uh, surgery, open heart surgery, five days after oh um, uh, being born. And the doctor that they technically called the best doctor mm -hmm. uh, that would do it was on vacation. Oh, my goodness. And he said he wouldn't be coming back. That's crazy. Yeah. So using, I think, my faith and... Uh, Seeing Dr. Didi, how she walked, mm 
mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't care. I'm like, I don't need this doctor then. Cause I mean, you know, God got us, okay. you know what I'm saying? Uh, long story short, this dude ended up coming back just mm-hmm. because like he was just tired of being away. And that. and just happened to come back. He was in Australia. Oh my goodness! And he said, "I'll be prepared to do this surgery tomorrow." Wow. Look so I mean, you know, just just that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff alone is really what got me to the point of just like unwavering faith. Like I mm-hmm. I could believe God for anything. I don't I don't think uh a lot of maybe some people have seen it or or didn't see it, but on my Instagram post maybe three two or three years ago, um mm-hmm. I had posted something about this Hellcat Durango. Okay. It's like, oh man, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. Right. I'm like I gotta just use my faith. But mm-hmm. I didn't have a job. Oh, I wow. wasn't working at the church at the time. Oh. And this is a hundred thousand dollar truck, right. you know. So, um, long story short, use my faith, mm-hmm. and you know, I had a Hellcat Durango. Okay, well, I, I didn't <laughs> and, use my faith for one of and those too. It, I yeah, mean. I got, I, I, I got it. I, um, I was able to pay for it with mm-hmm. other jobs that I was getting just yeah. when I was working. And then started working back with the church. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, things got crazy, whatever. I ended up getting robbed for my Durango shot and everything. So it was like, you know, it was, it, it was a blessing and I could see my faith uh, being mm-hmm. uh, used in even materialistic things. You right. know what I'm saying? So, right. um, you know, we got haters out there, so people ain't going to always want to see you shine. That's right. Haters you gonna know. hate us. Yeah, but it, it's it's all good or whatever. Um you know, I, I, mm. I'm I'm cool. I'll be all right. And I see the way you try to speed past. Yeah, man. I just I had got shot and all that. You know, you I'm, a I'm a thug. I'm a thug. Like <laughs> I got a hit wild. with a few shells, but I don't walk with a limp. Like, uh, okay. come on, Charlie. Come, come on. Come on with it. That's <laughs> what, what I'm talking what, what about. What scripture though. is that? What, uh, what? I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's in there. <laughs> nah. But yeah, I, I mean that that was a crazy experience right. as well. Um mm-hmm. having to use faith to get up out of the hospital. Yeah. Uh you know, not I haven't really ever talked on this um mm-hmm. you know like in public or whatever, but just trying to ha- had a, the faith and the urge to come up out of there like it was that was rough. That was mm-hmm. a dark dark time, but right. uh I think clinging to god in that time and then they had me on a lot of fentanyl yeah so i was like you know Mm -hmm. i was even closer to god because they like the higher you get right the closer you are to god right yeah well i I think that's in the bible too so all right um (laughs) well that's what my dad (laughs) it's like no i'm joking (laughs) so um so yeah uh yeah man Mm -hmm. they it, it i was just like in this I was in this state, man, where mm-hmm. it was just like I could everything could have just been all bad and I could have just been sitting in there like it's all bad because right. I was thinking about my now and I was just like it's right. all bad, it's all bad. But then knowing that I was uh trying to come up out of a situation mm-hmm. and I wasn't trying to stay in the situation. Right. It was like I had to use my faith. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I had to use my faith. And I got out a little bit sooner than what they expected. Right. It was a miracle. Yeah. And I mean, I think that really ties into what Dr. Mike is talking about with As I Am. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was talking about how you can purpose in your heart and you have basically what you say. Yeah. Um, So to see you exercising that faith in one of the most crazy extreme situations yeah Yeah, it was it 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 was it was crazy yeah Yeah. so what do you have to say as we wrap up what do you have to say to those who are in a dark place whether it's a mental health issue whether it's a trauma that's happened how do you can you inspire them in some way uh to continue moving forward what would you have to say a word of wisdom um i don't i Honestly, I I still deal with my little things. Mm-hmm. Um so I it's hard to just say what would help somebody. Right. Um I don't know what would help you. 
I right. mean, they, you know, I guess it's, I don't want to say it's cliche to say, mm -hmm. oh, just pray to God. Just, right, you know, but it's real talk, and but that's why we're here. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I think for me, I try to, um, I try to almost uh, not block it out, mm -hmm. but I just try to move forward, man. Right. I just try to move forward because if I sit there and I think about what has hurt me, mm -hmm. it'll only hurt me. Mm -hmm. It won't hurt nobody else and the rest mm -hmm. of the world will keep spinning. Um, right. So while you're hurt and you're mm -hmm. stuck and you're in this one spot and yeah. that you can't get out only mm -hmm. because you keep putting yourself there. Right. Um, uh, you know, from your situation or whatever. Right. Right. Uh, I feel like, you know, that that sometimes will hold you back. So right. I think for me, it's more so just. Mm -hmm. Just looking forward, I got a, I, I got dreams, I have goals, it's mm -hmm. things that I'm trying to do, and if I'm always thinking about, you know, this guy holding his gun and I'm seeing it go off and actually hit me, then right. it will, it will stop my day. Right. It will stop my entire day, and I will right. only think about that. Yeah. So I just try to look forward to what I want in life. Well, I appreciate you being, um, being candid and real because. You know, I, want, I think it's important that we have this format just so that people can, you know, you never know what people are going through. Yeah, right, right, People right. are going through all kinds of things. This is a crazy world. And, like, for you to even, you know, have the courage to talk about something that's so sensitive, I yeah. want to honor you for that, first of all. And I also want to say, you know, because I've had different struggles as well, you know, I think that something that can also help for people who are in a dark place, who don't know if they're buried or if they're being planted. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you talked about it, like focus on the promise, Yeah. you know, the things ahead of you, what God has for you, what Holy Man, Spirit is telling yeah, you. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's easy to say it when you're, you're not, you're not in that position, yeah. but I think it is, you know, the guiding light for a yeah. lot of people. I mean, that's, that's like what Dr. Dee Dee said. That mm -hmm. was her, her book was focus on the promise. I wasn't even thinking about that when I had said that piece at the end, which is, mm. is funny. That's why I'm like, wow. You get it honest. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Lit. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. So I want to thank you. I want to honor you. Um, and you know, this is, we don't have a name for this podcast yet. We're going to think of something. Yeah. We're going to think of something. We're going to turn we it up. We need to think of something. Right. Um, maybe you guys out there can help us with something. Yeah. If you guys got podcast names or, uh, anything of that nature, man, yes. send them in. Where, where can they email at? Uh, they can email us. At <laughs> I asked you just to, th just to throw you <laughs> off. Look, I guys, make up an email if, if you see us in the hallway, just give us a name. <laughs> if you see Josh in the hallway, <laughs> holler at him. Right. All right. Peace out, guys. Bye, Thank you guys. so much for hanging out. <laughs>
much higher. Oh no, couldn't get much higher. You lift it up, say, you have been raised. Lift it up. You deserve all praise. Come on. You have been raised, say, to the highest place. To the Somebody bless the name of our God today. Woo. Is he worthy to anybody in the room? Is the Lord worthy to anybody in the room? Does anybody love the Lord this morning? Well, let's sing this song from our whole heart this morning. Let's slip our hands up in the room. Listen. I love you. Oh. The Lord is my pillar, it's my fortress, said he's my deliverer, said he's my God, he's my rock. Oh, the Lord is my pillar, he's my fortress, I said he's my strong deliverer, in him I take refuge, hey, for he is my shield. He's the horn of my salvation. He is my shield. Said it, he's the horn of my salvation. He is my shield. Lift it up, y'all. And he's the horn of my salvation. He's my high tower. 
tower. Where do you run to to get safe? He's my high tower. So I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord Woo! who is worthy to be praised. So I will call on the name of the Lord Hey, who is worthy to be praised. You say, come on. Who is worthy to be praised? If he's worthy, come on, lift it up. I will call on. Say, who is worthy to be praised? Said, I'm gonna call on his name. Not just when I'm in trouble. Come on, say, who is? Cause he's just worthy. I will call on his name. Not just when I need help, but because he's worthy. Come on, I will call on. We'll call on his name. 
actually do it. We just sung about we call in his name. Someone actually do it. Somebody do it. Lift up the name of Jesus. Woo! Woo! Does anybody come to lift up his name? Woo! Has God been good to anybody this week? Let me see about showing our hands if God has been good to anybody this week. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. That means we don't come in without it. Enter the gates, enter his courts with praise. You should already have it. It should already be your weapon of choice before you enter these doors. Come with praise. The Bible says, come let us magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The Bible says where the two or three are gathered in his name, he has to be in the midst, y'all. It's more than two or three in here, so I can guarantee you he's here. The Bible says he's always with us. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. He won't just be there right on time. He never leaves us. The Bible said he will never forsake us. If you're glad that the Lord loves you, come on, just clap your hands and bless the Lord. Yes. Y'all, can we give it up one time for our e-campus this morning, those viewing from the e-campus? Hallelujah. Well, greet your neighbor one to another really quick. Just tell them how much you love them, how much they, you're glad to see them this morning. And once you're done, please take your seats and pay attention to the Faith Vision Monitors, everybody. Sunday to you. I'm Teresa Proctor and I have your morning announcements. But you know, before we dive into announcements, we have to celebrate. That's right, we have to celebrate. If it is your birthday or your anniversary, please stand up now and do your dance, do your dance. Yes, we desire to celebrate you. And if you're joining us through eCampus, type a B into the chat for your birthday and an A for your anniversary. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. All right, first timers. Listen, we knew that you were coming so much so that we went out and purchased a gift just for you. So here's what we want you to do. Rise up on your feet, stand up now, stand up all over the building. Oh, we see you, we see you. Listen. We're so excited that you are here. We've been waiting on you. We know that this is maybe your first time, but it certainly will not be your last. So thank you for coming and we look forward to you returning. You may be seated. Also, if you're joining us online for the first time, please type a one into the chat so that we can welcome you. Thank you so much for attending. FCC is seeking full-time maintenance champions. That's right. So if you're interested, please use the email that's listed on the screen. TQM is hosting its next virtual training. If you have purpose in your heart to launch your business or even take your business to the next dimension, you want to join us on March the 28th at 7 p.m. The link is on the screen to get registered. If you've missed our first movie night, you do not want to miss the second one. Listen, on Friday, March the 29th at 7.30 p.m. at our Brandywine campus, it's going to be movie night. You want to be there. You want to join the Sizzling Season Saints on Saturday, March the 30th at 10 a.m. at our Brandywine location. Here's the reason why because you have to learn all about healthy living. Yes, they're gonna be doing cooking demonstrations, how to live a healthy lifestyle. The information is listed on the screen. Are you ready for Easter? That's right, you should be, because Sunday, March the 31st, we're having our resurrection celebration. Yes, it's homecoming style. So get dressed up, put on that suit and tie, wear that fancy hat, and listen, remember, there's only one service at 10 a.m. at our Brandywine and Baltimore campuses, so there will not be an 8 a.m. service, but we will see you there. And remember to post your pictures. Oh yes, post your pictures using the hashtag listed on the screen. 
Calling all eCampus partners. Yes, it's time for our virtual meetup on Saturday, April the 6th at 11 a.m. The information is listed on the screen so that you can get login details. All right, it's time for our spring chancellor's meeting. It's mandatory for SOFBI students, faculty. If you are a licensed minister or leader, we wanna see you there. Tuesday, April the 9th at 7 p.m. at our Brandywine location. We will see you there. So Compassion Sunday is coming up. Sunday, April the 14th, if you desire to empower, transform the life of a child, more details are coming soon. Are you a new partner or a partner that have not completed Perfecting Class? You want to be a part of Perfecting Class. It is absolutely dynamic. Classes will be held for our Baltimore and Brandywine location at 8.30 a.m., Temple Hills location at 10 a.m., and eCampus Thursdays at 7 p.m. Look forward to you joining. Please keep the following partners in your prayers. Please know that your FCC family is praying with you and for you. We love you and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you know, tonight is Nightcap. Yes, tonight is Nightcap at 7 p.m. You can join us in person or virtually. Wednesdays are made for Bible study. And this week, drum roll, doo -doo -doo -doo, we're going to be at our Baltimore campus. So we will see you there. If you've missed any of the announcements, it's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna give you an opportunity now to scan the QR code. All right, well, that is it for our announcements on today. Enjoy this perfecting time in the word. Um, I want to say to Dr. Mike, Apostle Mike, um, Dr. Didi, and the Spirit of Faith family, you guys have been my family for I was, what was it like, since I was five. So you guys mean a lot to me. We had church here, but it was nothing like our services, nothing like our experiences at Spirit of Faith. Um, just like our camaraderie that we have at Spirit of Faith, I will never forget. It made me appreciate it even more. I just thank you guys for instilling in me everything that I was able to like um, perform and demonstrate while I was here at BMT. Excellence in all we do, integrity first, um, leadership, everything, those are love, um, everything that you guys have taught us, um, I was able to use here and I'm still able to use it um, in my Air Force career. So I just appreciate you guys for everything you poured into me from five all the way up to now, 24 years, 24 years old. So now that I've graduated, today is my last day of graduation. Um, March 18th, I will be going to San, uh, Fort Sam. I'm going to Fort Sam. That's uh, Fort Sam Houston. I'm going to be studying medical materials, so medical apprentice, basically. I'm just um, getting my foot in the medical door. City Central family, thank you for all your support and all your prayers. You guys have been so supportive in this, in this process of mine. It was tough for me, but you guys made it so easy. Uh, my dad is like, oh, so-and-so said this about you. It said, you know, keeping you in your prayers and that type of stuff. And BMT, you need as much support as you can get being in this field, especially as a female as well. So I just appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And I just um, decree Bible, prom Bible promise return on you and your family's life. All that you've poured into me and that you've um, given out to me. So I appreciate you guys. May is always the month of mental health awareness. And here at Faith City Central, we have a mental health awareness summit 
that happens every May. This year, it will be May the 11th, and I want you to be a part of it. That's whether you're having challenges or not having challenges. We just simply give you some principles and some tools to apply to your life so you can live a victorious life every day of your life. I'm so excited to be able to have with me today, Mr. Rick Thomas, who has attended our summits. Absolutely. How has that summit benefited you? Well, I thank you very much for this, Dr. Needy. You know, it's benefited me in so many ways. You know, coming out of the military, I didn't know that I had some of the issues dealing with anxiety and so forth and so on. And coming to the actual, the summit, you know, it gave me some tools on how to deal with or to overcome those things that I was experiencing. And and, and, and so my, my encouragement would be for folk to come on up. As you said, you know, it's not for somebody who may have a challenge, it's for somebody who just want to be aware of how to, even maybe to help somebody else with an issue that they may be experiencing. I love so that. So I enjoy it. I Thank love you. it. Thank you so much. And here at Out Summit, we are always integrating information like from science and the Bible. So you don't have to come and think it's gonna be one-sided. No, our pastor teaches us a sound word on how to have a sound mind. Science just complements what we do here in ministry. So I want you to come be a part of it. May the 11th at 10 a.m. at our Temple Hill campus. See you there. Hey ladies, I want to invite you to our Women Walking in the Word Pajama Party, our Unplugged Pajama Party. That's right, it's happening on April the 1st, that's Easter Monday, at our Brandywine campus at 7 p.m. Bring a friend, bring somebody to be a part of it. That's April the 1st at our Brandywine campus. It's a pajama party. See you there. particular skill sets, right? You know, all that's in my wheelhouse. Yeah, I did it. It's time to make that change. Um, man, Dee Dee is on the plane. Been such a long time. Eleven nights. I had to go to the doctor on Thursday, and he took an x-ray of my heart. He said, oh, you just missing Dee Dee in there. <laughs> oh, Dee Dee. Dee Dee, she's, uh, yeah, at JFK right now. Got one more leg. I was going to run up there and get her. I, 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 can, I can sympathize uh, with... Um, a lot of people who have had spouses to go on before them, you know, um, you know, after spending, it'll be 40 years for us next month. So after spending 40 years, and um, <clears throat> okay, look at look at somebody and say. No one's going anywhere anytime soon. 
Now, now look back, say, especially me. <laughs> you know, I've been confessing for a long time that Didi's going to go first. I don't know if I want that now. <laughs> I mean, because there are adjustments in it. Yeah. And for those of you who have go gone through that or are going through it, uh, man, I pray for you right now in Jesus' name. And, and if you're having difficulties beyond what's common for a believer, then you reach out to somebody. The Bible says, we, we, okay, we grieve, but just not like the world. Uh, Brother Moses, Deacon Moses, for you, right? How was that transition? A little difficult. A little difficult. Stay involved, get in the Word. That's right. And you could help someone else. Uh, not that we are for so, forming uh, support groups as such, uh, because it's, super, it's superfluous. It's superfluous. It's super, superfluous. It's, it's unnecessary. Why can't we just say? Um, and I'm learning that this ministry is evolving. I mean, in the evolution of it from the time I started, which was a little over 30 years ago now, man, things have changed. And we have to transition with things and not feel like we're being left out of anything. And not, not, not wanting to stay where we were. You know, a lot of people are stuck yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you need a new hairstyle. You've been wearing that one for the... You wait, till, you wait till you see when I come in here with my piece. I already done bought the hair. I bought the hair already. I got the hair. I'm, I'm just trying to find the right guy. Oh, y'all be seated. Who can, who can do that glue thing? Y'all think I'm playing. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to bust in. If you're not following, if you're not, okay, gather yourselves. Gather yourselves. Um, if you're not following me on social media, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, you should be following FCC. You should be following me. You should be following D. And then you'll see how the Word of God will make you free. Whatever, okay. Let it go, let it go, right? Um, my main, main man uh, and friend and brother and co-laborer in this gospel that we've been called and commissioned to carry to the world, he's celebrating a birthday today. Give it up for Elder Mario Taylor. Woo. Mario, Mar Mario deserves all of that. He certainly deserves all of that. He is, he's just like my right hand guy. Uh, yes. To our pastor, Mike Freeman, look at that banner. We appreciate you. Wow. Bring that up here. Let me see that. Who's behind that thing? And why'd you do that? Who is it from? Yeah, but I can't see whoever y'all pointing to. I said I can't see. What is that happening? Oh, Merlin. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know who you are. Uh, yeah, just wanted to make sure you knew how appreciated you are, not for all you do, but for all you are in reflection of the one you serve to this ministry. You are making a difference, and we appreciate you. All right. Let me see that. Always wanted to be a cake crusader. You all can see. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, you have to join me. Well, the men had a wonderful fellowship on Friday night at our B1 location. Uh, thank God for all the men who still know the importance of fellowshipping together. Boy, see, that's why they should not let me up here Amen. doing these kind of things so I can, I can, um, I can just talk about whatever I want to talk about. Yeah, but, uh, and then I get over into some other streams and lanes. But the men, I need you to know how important it is for you to continue to assemble yourselves. Amen. amen. I got one amen out of that. There's a mandatory meeting for all the SOFBI. I think that's FCCBI now, right? Almost. almost. That sounds like El Presidente's voice. Yeah, almost. Uh, yeah, we're having that meeting on this Tuesday. And so it's mandatory. What did I say? For all licensed ministers and leaders to be there. Okay? Uh, now we have a video that uh, is supposed to be seen at this time. Give me a throat lozenger or something. Thank you. Hey guys, we are here in Kenya and on April the 14th is our Compassion Sunday. I wanted to be able to present to you what we're doing here to get you ready and prepared so you too can sponsor a child. Listen, your little seed will take care of so many major things in their life, right? I mean, we are here giving hope to so many children. You may not can come here, but God knows your support can support them in every area of their life. They come here in the way. They come here. You come here in the way. Yourself, yourself right here in Kenya with your sponsor child. So, so you, get ready. You take care of a lot. Education, food, clothes. You help one child. One child helps so many other adults in their family and so many other kids. Outstanding. Um, Y'all singing today? Oh, I'll do that too then. Uh, it's time to give. Um, the, the pandemic packed a very powerful punch that created a perishing predicament for a whole lot of people and in particularly believers. Some believers have been, ooh, man, push back on their laurels. They have missed the mark and even some have backslidden. And so I've watched that happen and this is specifically for those of you who are viewing uh, virtually right now. If you are not outside of this area, what did I just say? I sincerely want to see. See, you can give me capes and you can give me all different types of accolades. I'm after your life. Give, give me your life as it relates to adhering to the word of God in participating in this exchange. You see, and you need to come from this indolent disposition you quite frankly become lazy and it's showing up in your life. I met with a member who hadn't been here back and forth a little bit this Thursday that the pandemic caused them to backslide. Now you may say that's them. Well, 
you may still be confessing Jesus, but your behavior has literally gone into a backslidden position. You are doing things that you walked away from. Now those things are alive back again in your life. It's important that you fail not the assembling of yourself. Now let me give you this revelation so you'll know this. And I'm talking specifically to those of you who are at home. I remember going with even that grown woman that you just saw who's in Kenya, going to the Toys R Us years ago, and watch this. Coco's in. I need to talk to them. Give me, yes, yeah, stay there. And we would try on bikes. I mean, she would ride all around that Toys R Us with a bike that she liked or thought she liked and she tried on. And you had to take this little ticket off of the bike and then take it to the cash register. Y'all remember that? Then the cashier would tell you, you have to go around back and pick up the bike. Well, when you get around back, they bring you a box. And I'm saying, wait a minute, I need, I need that bike that I just bought in there. They said, this is the bike. But it comes unassembled. Now, 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 they tricked me years ago. In grade school, they said we would have assemblies. And these assemblies just were comprised of the entire school coming together and meeting in one room. And I thought that that same word assembly that Hebrews talks about in 1025 assembly were the same. No, the assembly in Hebrews 1025 is the one that comes unassembled. So, my pedal to the bike may be home. My handlebars to the bike may be watching virtually. Have you ever tried to ride a bike without one pedal? In the hood. <laughs> On my mama. And you would get that one side going because you're going to strip the threads inside the other side. Or you had to rig something together. Imagine a foot pedal laying on your kitchen table by itself. What good is it? That pedal will not fulfill its purpose until it comes and assemble itself to this body. You got a part of us. She went on to even tell me, I stopped tithing and all. Now, every time you get money in your hand, a test began. And God will view what you do with that as what you would do with if it got bigger. If you're unfaithful in the little, you're telling him, don't trust me with any more than what I have now. No, I'm telling you, I've lived both sides of this coin. Tithing is a test to see how much you, number one, love God, number two, trust God, and then number three, prioritize God. You, you can do what you want to do. El Presidente, I, this is not even my lane. I wouldn't ask you for a dime if it was left up to Mike Freeman. Where is Gloria? Open your big mouth like you typically do. No, I wouldn't. That's not my style. That's not in my wheelhouse. My father wouldn't allow us to do that, Don. Don't you dare walk around here 
with your hand out. You go to work and make it happen yourself. You don't have to ask anyone for anything. So I had to force myself, Jason, to be comfortable in doing this. I, I really got to force. Well, it's gotten better because I know what God is up to in it. But still yet there are people who think I'm just trying to get money from them. Matter of fact, if you think that, it'd be best that you keep. Matter of fact, if you think that, <laughs> it would be best that you keep your money. You got it? Because I don't want to come across as angry or fussing or anything. I just want to love up on you, let you know that tithing is the will of God. Let's make our faith confession over our finances. Father, in the name, Lord Jesus, I thank you that I'm anointed to prosper. My eyes are open to see creative ways. My ears are open to hear the best deal. And my heart is pure so that you can channel finances through me. I am on the path of perpetual increase as I enter into my wealthy place. Wealth and riches are in my house. And I live in a daily expectation. Woo! Money comes to me. My nature attracts money. The fear of lack has been broken and has no power over me. I hear my father's voice. And the voice of intimidation and limitation, I choose not to follow. I am free from debt. I am the lender and never the borrower. The wealth of the riches is being transferred to me. I am ready to distribute, and my life is a distribution channel for God's work in the earth. I thank you, Father, that daily you are loading me with benefits. I, my God, I am. Abundance is your will for me. And prosperity. To come to me now in the name of Lord Jesus. And I will never be broke another day in my life. Amen. Uh, you, 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 what's uh, conspicuous in this absence is, of course, Tim Bowman Jr., uh, simply because they're at home resting from this arduous week of delivering Noah Alex Bowman. Yeah. Uh, you all can come out. Noah came in at eight pounds, seven ounces. I happened to be in the room. I don't know if Breeden wants me to tell you all this. Uh, I'll apologize. <laughs> you heard that right, yeah. So, huh? My name is G. I can say what I want. Sonia said it. Sonia said it. And, um, and Tim and I, Pastor Tim and I, we were sitting there in between contractions talking about the next one. I said, so Tim, I said to Tim, all right, one more, right, Tim? Tim said, you know, I smiled. Yeah, Dad. <laughs> one more. She finished that last contraction. At the moment, one more, she lifted her head. She said, sis, done. <laughs> Give it up for Faith City Music. Oh, come on, y'all. Let's give it up for Dr. Mike, everybody. Well, it is Palm Sunday today, and the people of God were at the entrance of the gate crying Hosanna in the highest with their palms, meaning prosperity be upon us, right? So befitting to sing about the blessing. Anybody glad for the blessing of Jesus? Woo. Let's do this together, y'all. song is very simple. It says, so the Lord bless you. Keep you. Make 
make his face shine upon be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace anybody thankful for peace Ooh. let's do that again the Lord bless you everybody sing the Lord bless you and keep you his face shine, shine smile on you, just to the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. We thank you, Lord. So it is so. Let's sing it. Say, all over the room, say. That means it's done. It is so. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, oh, amen, oh. As a family together, come on. The Lord bless you. Everybody say, the Lord bless and keep you safe. We want him to smile on us today. Make his face shine upon you. Be great. The Lord turn his face toward you. Come on, and give you peace. We thank you, Lord, for peace. We thank you for love. Come on. Let's lift our voice. Everybody say amen. Say. It's a done deal, y'all. Come on. It is so. Come on. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we give you glory. We bless your name. That's right. It's okay to lift your hands and say amen. test as a sign of the faithfulness of God. Has God been faithful to anybody in the room? We can attest that all our lives he's been good to us. Hey, lift your hands, slip it up and sing this with me all. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you come on may his favor come on lift it up may his favor. come on say lift it up generations and your family and your children come on y'all come on one more time come on say may his favor be upon and a thousand generations and your family and your offspring and their offspring and their offspring may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you he is in you come on say he is with you come on in the morning and the evening when you come in Your joy, he is with 
Do not wait on the victory. You already have it. Somebody celebrate the fact you already have victory. You ain't got to fight for it. It's already in his hands. Victory belongs to Jesus. Woo. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Somebody bless his name. Come on. If you know he's worthy. Woo. Woo. Y'all may be seated in the presence of our God. But, but, and this is the same, even with money. We have had thousands, tens of thousands of dollars that come into the ministry as a result. We've been on television 35, what, 34 years now? Or 36 years, almost 36 years. And people send money in for, you know, for the television. And uh, it, it passed, much of it, a lot of it in the past particularly has passed through my hands. And it's, you know, a real temptation to take some of that money. Who's going to know? You wouldn't know. I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. I made a policy. I, you said count yourself dead. I can always, just like you, I can use money all the time, anytime. I got something I can use it for all the time. Are you following me? And, and, but I had to make rules for myself. And, and see, I'm not, I'm not doing any credit and I'm, I'm not telling you about it for any credit or applause, but I'm going by what the word is. It says, count yourself to be dead. Dead folk don't embezzle funds. Dead folk can't steal money. Dead folk don't take what doesn't belong to them. So I just made a rule for myself. Unless somebody specifically, and occasionally this would happen, where somebody sends something in and they would earmark it specifically for Fred Price. Personally, I'm taking it all. <laughs> and no problem with that at all. Because if they didn't want me to have it, they wouldn't have put my name on there and made a notation. This is for Pastor Fred Price when I was pastor. Frederick K. C. Price. So I, had, but I, so I had to make rules for myself. That's why I never caught stealing any money. Not because I'm so good, it's because I'm so smart. No, covenant smart. I did many years ago what the word told me to do count myself to be dead and I'm telling you of all the experiences that I've had in life I have never heard of anybody from the cemetery rising up and stealing any money that's uh, of course a vintage Dr. Price um, man I've never I've never seen a dead man steal anything. <clears throat> At your neighbor, have you met any dead thieves? No, man. Everybody who's taking something from me is very much alive. But they were not dead. That's what we've been talking about to some degree, right? Uh... God, I could have listened to them sing that song for another two hours. May his favor go before you and behind you. Woo, he is with you. A thousand generations, my family. And I felt this so strongly upon me, I had to just come out and decree it upon your house. Yeah, I was dancing with them and, you know, get my, my, my party on. But uh, it, was, it was specifically designed to, you know, bless you and declare blessings upon you. Um, you know, I saw the announcement on, in the announcements today. Um, and specifically, I don't know why I saw it this way. But it mentioned something about nightcap. I don't know who's going to be there. <laughs> I ain't coming tonight. One of y'all, if one of y'all want to do nightcap, anybody free for nightcap want to teach? <laughs> Mo Clark, uh, Clo Mario, I don't know what y'all going to do. Y'all better find a teacher. You know, for all you want who want to be there. Uh, then bless the Lord. 
Yeah, my part's going to be at home today. <laughs> Y'all ready for the continuation of As He Is? Yeah. Happy Palm Sunday to you. I said this. Come on, give me that first slide. I said this. I said As He Is. All right, <clears throat> let's go, media. <clears throat> Any day now. Yeah, here it is. Let me remind you again to do what? This is the objective, to create a success map. It can't get any simpler than this, Don. This is, if I give you a map to every partner, if you follow the map, every partner will prosper. Let's go. However, you know, I believe that the church is catering far too much to culture to gain their attention. Amen. Amen. Next, please. Rather than what, class? That's not the whole class. Turn to your neighbor and say, reading is fundamental. You can't see it? Now you can see it? Okay, read together. They took it away after they put it up. <laughs> Go to these two scriptural references. Zechariah 4 and 6. Next, please. <clears throat> so we can see the scripture reference. He says, so he said to me, this is the word of the Lord from who? Zerubbabel. I didn't want to make that, mess that up like superfluous. <laughs> Not by what? Might, nor by culture, but by my spirit. You know, culture has a, a, an element of authority in it. Do you understand that? That's why people fall into it. It's it's beckoning or it's summoning you constantly when you're not affixed to the right things. Okay, go to the next scriptural reference. Go to the next slide. Ephesians, no, right here, stay here. And they're calling because we have to be equipped, and they're calling from verse number 11. I'm assuming you all know verse 11. That's why we started there, because verse 11 says what, class? And so I, maybe I shouldn't have assumed that. <laughs> Verse 11 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists. You just didn't know the address, but you know where they live. You know, you may not know somebody's address, but you can get to their house. So verse 12 is the result of 11, why he did verse 11. And their calling is to nurture and prepare all the who to do their what class? And as they do this, they will enlarge FCC. Shepherds don't beget sheep. Sheep beget sheep. Shepherds have no business with sheep. I'm talking about in the beginning element. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? So it's your duty to go and build this ministry with your life. I told you these lessons are not lessons for you to study, but they're lessons for you to build your life. I've built my life off of the lessons of Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. Caprende. Can I move on? Okay, and so as you receive the word, the Bible says, because some of you have been teachers so long, you need, some of you have been taught so long, you still now need teachers to teach you. And, and that's oxymoronic. What, what? You've been taught. Now go and teach. 
I am watching how the Lord is simplifying all of this in its presentation. You should be getting all of these slides and all of this information weekly. If you aren't, then find out why. Once you get these things, it's your responsibility. What did I just say? To teach these things to your family. Husbands, this is principally your duty to, oh, I didn't get any amen, to be, to take upon yourselves to be the teachers in the home. The husband is like the thermostat. The wife, wife is like the thermometer. You, husband, set the temperature, and your wives will woo, accommodate where you said that. You said it in hell, they're going to help you. <laughs> you said it in heaven. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Okay, for you singles, you're responsible for fulfilling these things on your own now. My single daughters, if you're dating a man who doesn't already currently have this kind of regimen in his life, he is not the one. But pastor, you, you fine. Believe you me, that fine is going to wear off because I've been looking in the mirror. The fine that was there before, it's evolved. Glory say it's gone. <laughs> Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, it's just a different kind of fine. <laughs> it's a refine. No, man. Y'all got to understand some things physically change. When Dede and I first got married, my chest was way up here. Okay, let's move on. But you singles, let me tell you something. How in the heck are you going to say I do to someone else and you haven't said I do to you? Do you realize you can be a cheater long before you get into a relationship? You know you cheat yourself of what you're supposed to have as a single? before you get married, and you press to get married. Can't you just look at a lot of these married couples and tell you shouldn't rush? <laughs> Come on. And all the married people said, Amen. those are mostly all the unhappy ones. <laughs> right there. Or, or they've been through something. Or they've been through something. And they're trying to tell you, man, you don't want to rush into this. So while, while I'm preparing, or maybe I'm not even thinking about any of you singles, single, and you, you don't even care to be married, lift your hand. Okay? That's cool. They're here, yeah. And for whatever reason, you have that right. But you can't, you can't, you can't have that right and a little son, son on the side. I'm talking about toys and all, vibrators. Oh, I don't think a pastor should be saying that. And you got one as a single watching pornography to get off. I don't need to be married. You're already married. To the vibrator. Uh, uh, 
Let's move on. Next slide, please. Next slide. Don't leave now, lady. Don't leave now. No, no, no. I'm just, no, I'm just, uh, no, I'm just, I'm just, I know, I know, I'm just, man. Come on, give me the slide so I can get out of here. Oh, this is so appropriate. <clears throat> The more Jehovah reveals to me how dead I am through his word, the wider the gap grows, not only from the world, but from most Christians. I'm different than a whole lot of y'all. Okay, well, say whatever you want to say. Look at your neighbor and say, me too. He's not the only one. I'm different from a whole lot of professing believers. What y'all do kind of ooh, get me thinking, dang, are they saved? <laughs> and you really can't tell much difference. Ne next slide, I got to go on. <laughs> Leadership, it guides, it provides, injects what? Vision <laughs> into Vacuities, class. Vacuities, empty spaces, or inane. My role now, because you have agreed to surrender, and when you empty yourself of you, you must be filled with something. Are you still here? Go to the next line. And so since we have agreed to surrender ourselves, we got to be replaced by him. We got to be replaced by who, class? Him. You surrender. Now let's be replaced by him. Next one, go. I've requested. What did I just say? That you do what? To who? To who? To who? Yeah, I wanted to get them all mixed up together because some would go on to say the word and some would read it as it is. They're one and the same. Me and the word in this sense as it relates to the office is the word. It is the word for you to give yourself to pastors. So pastors can teach you and anyone without a pastor is out of the will of God. Are you still here, class? Yeah. Now, let's move on to the next one. Watch this. Give yourself, give yourself to me the word specifically in this season for specifically harvesting in the next season. You don't, you may not realize this, but I'm working on your 2025 now. God, I thought somebody was going to shout, he is a good pastor. <laughs> Michael? <laughs> you had to be there to understand that. Next slide. Seasons are periods of time. That's difficult to see, isn't it? Can you all see that all right? Seasons are what? They're periods. Of the, well, see, that says seasons are periods to time. It should be of time, right? In time. Okay? And you can tell Dee Dee wasn't here. Whoever did this, they probably say, oh, man, it's all right. I'm not going to give out any names. Something happens. You see the seed? Time. See, in the scripture... The Bible talks about seed time and it's compounded. But what you have to understand, you must separate seed time from the time. Because there is, Pepper, a seed time, but then time steps in between there. So I've sliced the compound word seed time in half and I say seed, time, and then harvest. How many of you are thrilled that some seasons don't last always? Yeah. Glory to God. 
but you only can restart another season by sowing seed. I mean, taking advantage of it because seasons are going to come and they're going to pass if you participate in them or not. The scripture talks about D-U-E season, but D-U-E season is never possible until D-O season. Are you still here? So I got to do something, and then time passes. Oh, glory. Then I'm do something. The question is, what are you going to be do? Because the law is going to work whether you work with it or work against it. It's going to work. Don't try this at home. If you go get a fork or if you got a fork and you bend back the two inside pieces of the fork and let the outside pieces of the fork just hang, just stay where they are, and you stick it into a socket, the law is going to work. And some people say that electricity killed them. No, your ignorance of the law killed you. Are you hearing me? I can back it up with scripture. My people die for ignorance. You gather here, the scripture says, we come into this place, Ephesians, not Ephesians, Ecclesiastes chapter number five, to do what, class? Why do you think I'm referring to you as class? Because I want you to know when you come in here, it is specifically designed for you to learn. Not for you to jump, shout, run, spit, split, split, spin. I guess they do, they just do, do splits in, in church. Some of them. Flips, splits, all that. Okay, watch this. Some people come for hookups. Some people come for makeups. You've been so bad, your wife's been trying to tell you to come. Now you coming to make up. If you don't st stay with the word, you're going to again break up. Now, it is important as you come to receive the word in this season that you're planting what I'm asking you to plant. Okay, I just, maybe they're recording. Okay, uh, get the directions later. They're trying to get you. <laughs> turn right at the next turn. Um, this thing will get so blessed that seasons will begin to overlap seasons. I'm telling you, I've never been in anything like it. And it is super califragilistic SB to see seasons of harvesting overtaken season of harvesting. Like while you're still in the field, the Bible says, planting, you're going to be reaping at the same time. No, no, I got this system so accelerated in my life that it's perpetually coming. Wait till y'all hear about the latest proposition. Oh, no, no. It has me be founded. I will, you, you're not even going to be able to wrap your head. How is this so? That's why I came in here about two weeks ago and told you to pray and fast. And you all remember that? Yes. Dr. Charles. This kind of stuff is right down your house. You, you get a kick out of this kind of stuff. Oh, Lord. And I'm doing my best not to let the cat out the bag. Somebody shout, tell us, Pastor, tell us. God, dog, if you do that three more times, I may. 
No, no, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Mm. Okay, stop it. I'm going to tell you soon enough. I can't tell you now. Don't you just hate when people, I got to tell you something. What? I can't tell you right now. Next slide, please. Ecclesiastes 3 said, to everything, there's a what? And a now just qualifying that there are seasons and time. Solomon makes it plain. Uh, make it makes it plain. He says to every purpose under the heaven. Purpose is the essence and the extenders of our lives. If you are here and you do not know your purpose. Let me advise you that a part of your purpose is the vision of this ministry. So, if anyone ever asks you, what's your purpose in life, and it has not been revealed to you specifically concerning you individually, you say, say to them, I know a part of my purpose is the vision of my man and woman of God. I thought I was going to get a better amen than that. Even Pastor Wayne taught us that he took his vision and put in under this vision. And as this vision moved, so was his. And there came another time mm, because something happens. Come on. If you, can, if, you can get your, if you can get your understanding acquainted with this law, you'll do better in life by virtue of knowledge. Just knowing. And now he's traveling all over the country in different parts of the world because he tucked his vision in this vision. And he made his purpose this vision. All right, let's read on. It says, a time to what? Be born and a time to? A time to? And a time to? Some of you pluck up which is planted too soon. Okay, go to the next verse because I, I got to just. That's seven. Okay, but they had one and two there. They had one and two. And that's too far up top, so you can't see that up top. Can you see the scriptural reference? Okay, that's Galatians chapter number six. All right, seven through what, ten? Okay, and that's the Amplified Version? Okay, it reads as follows. Do not be deceived. God is not what, class? He's not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed, nor treated with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever, whatever, you know why you keep getting empty birthday cards? Whatever a man sows. You know how you just rude to people? I don't know why everybody all rude in this store to me. Check your seed. You know why you don't have any friends? You come up lonely in some seasons? Check out how friendly you're being. The Bible says, he who has shown himself will make friends. Okay, let's go back to the scripture reference now. It says, for whatever man sows, this and this only is the capacity, mm, this and this only, what he will reap. Did I jump something there? Okay, for the one who sows to his flesh, his sinful capacity his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. Could this be? I'm just saying, could it be? Let's just check it. 
while why sickness and disease want, runs rampant in all of your generations? Has nobody kicked out this proclivity generation after generation? He drink, you drink, now your children drinking. They cuss, you know what I'm saying? It's just, now, now, Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What did I just say? Oh, I love settings like this, man. Well, you just sit and learn. You don't need to jump at this time. However, watch this. There are generational choices that are still being made towards those proclivities. Now, you've been set free from the curse because Jesus, but you keep participating in the decisions, which then activates another law. And it's the law of seed, time, and harvest. And although you've been set free from the curse of the law, there is a law that says a man will get what a man sows. So daddy kept doing it without Jesus. A granddaddy kept doing it. Great granddad. It's in your family line. Now it's on you. You receive Jesus. It stopped. But now you got to make different choices. I place before you now. Seed, what you going to do with it? What kind of seed you going to sow? Are you going to be the same nasty person tomorrow at work? You going to keep sowing that seed? I think the worst kind of nasty is the nice nasty. You know how people can be nice and nasty? I mean, they done got so, ooh, good at it. Well, you can have a seat over there right now, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Next slide, please, because I can't spend that. Go back to the scripture. Pull it up. But did I lose something? I, I lost my confidence monitor. Okay, I'll just turn around. Okay, y'all not going to keep playing with me. But the one who sows to the Spirit, ooh, move, move that other graphic stuff. I can't, I can't see it, whatever y'all working on. Move, okay. <laughs> but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap. So let us not grow weary or become discouraged and what? For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. Now, let me help you with this a bit. Because it says, don't become weary or discouraged doing good. Now, the Amplify does a little better than the other translations with this because some people think that they faint in between the petition and the manifestation. You know, after I've made my petition known, there's that time in between, and then there's the manifestation. Something happens, time passes, something happens. So most people think it's when time is passing, you get weary. No, you can get weary in seed time. That's why it says, don't become weary in doing good. Because the people, you sat here and said you was going to speak to tomorrow. When you get there tomorrow and you see them, don't get weary of doing good. Because you're going to see them, and they may look at you like they've been looking at you. And the minute you see that look, look at you, and they said, don't get weary. Don't get weary. <laughs> see, 
because you can faint when it's time to sow. What did I just say, class? When you're at home and you're supposed to be in the books getting ready for the next exam and then somebody hit you up on the gram, hit you up on the, on the thread, and boy, you know that demon. Once you get started, you, you, open, you open up one of them things, there you go. There you go from there. There you go. Ain't no putting it down now. It, but it's time to study. You just got weary. You just, you thumbing through, man. You know they asked you to do something, and you got weary. Donna just, man. And the worst part about when I'm flipping through that thing and I see my 30-minute time limit come up and I ain't finished. <laughs> and I hit that button, I want to see more. Give me more. What kind of addiction is that thing? You get weary and you keep doing it, you don't even know you're sowing something to your own detriment. And then you're wondering why life is the way it is. You haven't been watching your seed. Can I go on? Yes. Give, me, give me the scripture back. Hurry, Andele. Watch this. Verse 10. So then, while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do what, class? good to how many people? White people too? Yes. We don't be good to white people, do we? Yes. Come on. What about Asian people? Yes. I'm talking about the slanted eyes people. Yes. I'm about, what about the Latinas? Yes. Them too? Be, all people? Jews. Yes. It's been difficult for me to be nice to black people. Because <laughs> I, I ain't black. I don't know what y'all... Black people are a trip. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time for you to look in that mirror. <laughs> God, dog, this is going to sound wrong. Say, say it. Thank you. Who said that? Thank you so much for looking out for me. God, dog. But it's, it's, no what? That's that's self-control. So when I say it, but. Make it sound good. Sometimes. I don't even want to be associated as one of y'all. Don't even call me black. Because I'm spirit anyway. Because I see some of y'all in the way some of y'all act. And then you say I'm saved on top of that. Full of the. I hope you can kind of understand and relate to that. Because here's what you may not like even more than that statement. I divorce myself from any ethnicity. Because there's only one race. There's not the white race, the black race. It's the human race. Somehow we've put these colors on things, and then we act accordingly. My Bible tells me. See, that's why I talk about the more I die 
And the more I get, get into this word, I distance myself even from believers because you are not black. You are not Republican. You are not Democrat. You are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. They just so happen to put me in a black body. But my body ain't me. And me ain't my body. And I act accordingly to where I've come from. See, this ministry will never be as big and popping and popular and jam-packed and people jumping around and da 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 this and da da that because I don't just tell you what you want to hear. Some people can't hang with me because you can't handle the truth. Am I right, I say? When you get someone who's telling you exactly what you want to hear and won't cor correct your behaviors and won't talk about them and won't address them, you're going to have it jam-packed because there will be nothing to challenge you when you walk away from here. But doing the good stuff that you like to do and not taking all the bad stuff that you shouldn't do. Turn to your neighbor and say, oh, I thought he was talking to the people behind this. I said, turn to your neighbor and say, oh, I thought he was talking to... Then, then look back at another person and say, and then I thought he was talking about the people in front of us. <laughs> look at somebody else and say, and it got so bad, I thought he was talking about you. But I finally discovered it was me all the time. You have got to be kidding me. This chick say, stop. It's not all right. I wanted to be done it today. <laughs> Remember these words found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith. God. Hey fam, I'm Sanaya and I want to personally thank you for tuning in to today's service. I know you had an amazing encounter with God, but guess what? It does not have to stop there. If you want to receive salvation, find a church home, or even receive Apostle Mike and Dr. Dee Dee Freeman as your pastors, feel free to scan the QR code on the screen. We would love to have you join us for one of our services in person so you can join us at 8 a.m. at our Temple Hills location or 10 a.m. at our Brandywine in Baltimore location. And lastly, don't forget to share your takeaways because as our apostle always says, we're teaching you so that you can teach someone else. We can't wait to see you soon and I pray that you have an amazing week.